Any of our students, we all had this same question. Henry C. Kinley was teaching Lord God and Jesus Christ up until 1967. And when you came into class, you were hearing, Lord God and Jesus Christ is satanic. This is wrong. This is ignorant. So they couldn't give you a good, reasonable answer other than it was, well, you know, he didn't think the world was ready yet. Let's get into this topic. If you have a different explanation or you want to tell me how I'm wrong about this, I would gladly like to hear from you in the comments section. Thank you. Henry C. Kinley said he received a vision and revelation from Yahweh Elohim. Had you been in the classes of IDMR prior to 1960s, you would have heard him say that he had a vision and revelation from the Lord God. From 1931 until 1961, you did not find anything that he printed that did not say Lord God and Jesus Christ. He was not talking about Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua all of those decades. Okay, so in 1931, who did he have the vision and revelation from? He didn't have the vision of revelation from the Lord God, did he? Because if he did, then why did he change it to Yahweh Elohim? Why did he have to correct it? <gasps> the explanation I got was that the founder knew the names all along, but he didn't feel the world was ready yet. And dignitaries at some of the conventions would explain it that way. But there already was in place... Many thousands of people belonging to what they called the sacred name movements. And this was happening from the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, all the way up to date now. So there were people that felt that it was time for people to know the true names and titles and name of Yahshua. So why didn't they tell us that during the moderation? The moderation is adamant to explain to you that Yahweh is the true original name that Elohim is the true title, and Yahshua is the name of the Savior. But they don't want to tell you that after the founder had his vision and revelation, he was still teaching Lord God and Jesus Christ. And I found that to be deceptive. It was like a bait and switch. I found this out the hard way because I had got Elohim, the archetype original pattern, and that was the second edition. The original edition was called God, the Archetype Original Pattern of the Universe. And there was a caption in that book that's supposed to explain Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua are the true name and title. Prior to 1961, if you were in the class of IDMR, you never heard that Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua was the true name and title. He wasn't publicly teaching it, and we don't know that he knew that that was the correct thing to be doing. We can presume that he did. And then the big question was, well, what about those people? Some of them were raised up and died in the teaching before he came up with this textbook. Did they go to hell? Because we certainly were being led to believe that you couldn't be saved in Lord God and Jesus Christ. And then you had to rely on Henry C. Kinley's divine authority, supposedly, that it was him, it was up to his discretion that he was to be able to tell you when you should know this name and title and that it was presumably the spirit in him that would save the people that didn't know the name. I mean, it's, it's a far-fetched story when you really stop and think about it, which I don't think that they wanted you thinking about it, and that's why they didn't talk about it. But they were so adamant, like, hey, when you meet somebody, what's the first thing you do? you got to know their name. They introduced themselves, and now you can begin to know them. You can't know anything about anybody if you don't first know their name. And that is so opposed to the fact that he gives all these explanations, draws up a bunch of charts, and has Lord God, Jesus Christ, all over him. And supposedly later, it was no longer valid. And we're not supposed to think that this was a mistake that he was catching up on and correcting, but that this was ultimately all a part of the divine plan. And again, you were not ready to know those true names and titles prior to the 1961 textbook. But the sacred name movement that had been going on since the 1930s, they felt that you were ready to know the true names and titles. A bit deceptive, like you were hiding some of your dirty laundry under the bed. So devotees, you have been asked to believe that he received all the knowledge of the entire purpose and plan instantaneously. But he had to make these adjustments. Every few years, every few decades, he was changing something.